Minglava to you all. I will be the moderator for today's talk. I am the CDM captain, Kimpa Baton. The day program is organized by collaboration between sisters to sisters and people's goal. It is the international day for the elimination of sexual violence in conflict. Myanmar people lived under military dictatorship for more than 70 years with no security whatsoever. In the ethnic area, the armed oppression has been there. The rule of law is not there. So the people's lives are not secure at all. After the coup d'etat, women experience various forms of sexual violence, particularly in the investigation places and in the ethnic area, lots of sexual violence are reported. When it comes to the sexual violence, it includes with the form of rapes, sexual harassment and many other forms. The women who experience sexual violence suffer from physical damage and as well as mental damage with the enormous impact on their social economic status. The underage girl who were raped suffer from loss of life and as well as suffering from the vulnerability if they still live. The sexual violence vicious cycle will be on and on if the elimination of the sexual violence is not there. The day topic is to discuss how to eliminate the sexual violence. We have Do Kien Oma, Do Lui Pong Yem, CDM Captain Yeminu, Captain Kimpa Patun will have the conversation in order to discuss the way in which the sexual violence may be eliminated. Siama Lui Pong Yem, Ming Lawa to you. What is sexual violence? And I also would like to know what would be the activities of the women organization, particularly on this very day, which is the International Day for the Eliminations of Sexual Violence in Conflict. Thank you. Ming Lawa to all of you. It is the International Day for the elimination of sexual violence and conflict in Myanmar, particularly when it comes to the the importance of the day, most of Myanmar people might not necessarily aware of what it's the day that we have. Looking at the Myanmar context, the past 70 years in which the active conflict was there, the women suffer from all sorts of sexual violence throughout the whole time. Sexual violence has been used strategically by the military to commit this crime against its own people. Why we can say so as such is that when it comes to the sexual violence and conflict in the ethnic area, the women were raped as a weapons and as a strategy for the military. By raping the ethnic woman, the military 
believe that this is how they would suppress the pride and mentality of the ethnic people for their own words. The revolt ethnic. So for the Women League of Burma, we documented this sort of incidents. And we have solid evidence over 500 incidents of such. There were rape cases, but when it comes to the rape case particularly, they were not just regular rape cases. The rape cases were committed by the higher rank military officials targeting the ethnic women. And as I mentioned that there has been over 500 incidents of such nature over the time. In this spring revolution, this sort of tactics has been executed all across the country often. So basically sexual violence is still used as a weapon and strategy of the military. We continuously and consistently point out about this situation. This is illegal action in the light of domestic law and as well as the international law. Rape is a criminal behavior. But this sort of criminal act still enjoy the impunity. When it comes to the sexual violence, the forms of it in Myanmar, in ethnic area and in the prisons, there are many forms happened in such areas. Very recently in Chin State, rape case happened. The way that the rape case was conducted at that area happened on uh, feeding mother. The feeding mother was raped by group of soldiers. So this is a very clear indicator that the military used rape as the weapon and their strategies. And they use it intensively and widely during their military operation. Our organization points this particular condition out continuously. They raped the woman. Not only they raped the woman, but also they killed them. They raped in front of the parents of the victims, the brothers and sisters of the victims. This is outrageous and inhumane. This sort of behavior and action was and is not a new action, but that happened throughout the history. We have all the evidence, but this kind of action still enjoy the impunity. So some people said that well, there is no particular policy how to handle it. There is no policy to allow or not to allow in the military as a policy. 
some people said that it was just the behavior of an individual. But when it comes to the institution perspective, the institution has to take responsibility and accountability for its member for this kind of action. The institution needs to take responsibility and accountability for the behavior of its member, which the accountability and responsibility is grossly lacking against this kind of action. So basically, the army apparently have the license to rape. So in this very day of International Day for the elimination of sexual violence in conflict, people needs to aware of the importance of the damage of this action and the recognitions of the survivor are required by the public. The challenges, the struggle of the survivor are to be understood by the people. The protection of the survivors are very important as well. So this is the very much the values that the United Nations stands in order to support and protect the survivors. So that's why we celebrate this day and there are international tools and mechanisms such as 187 and our country is a country that required to report the CEDAW. The country has responsibility to protect the woman of its own. So this is what I would like to contribute in this round of discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for all of your points. The recognizations and the humanitarian assistance towards the survivor by the community and by the people. It's very much important. That is what I understand from you. And now we would like to in invite Siama Dokin Oma. What is impunity and what is the current situation of accountability and responsibility of the sexual violence that the human rights organizations continuously and consistently points out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting me to be part of this discussion. I just would like to mention one thing. Over a year, the military council tried to control this country after staging the coup. But let me be very clear that they has not been able to control the country. So staging the coup is not a success at this moment because of the public, because of all the stakeholders, because of all the actors in the revolution, the goal of the military council is not fulfilled. So this is something that I just would like to stress as well. Now, let me talk about impunity. Impunity, the meaning of it, it's very much clear in Myanmar. When one committed something wrong towards someone, and if no justice was brought, and if 
no penalty was made, if no correction was made, then this is impunity. Today's topic is about the sexual violence in conflict. When it comes to the conflict, we are to talk about the armed institutions, organizations. I will emphasize my point of discussion, particularly on the military, the military council. The legal responsibility and accountability is the key to penalize the perpetrator. The government, the military, the state institution has the job to protect the people rather than protecting the people. But if they commit crime against its own people, then the only way to solve this problem is to penalize them. In order to do so, the military organizations, the armed institution are to be under the civilian control. This is the only way to eliminate the sexual violence in conflict. When it comes to the impunity, impunity might happen based on individual, impunity might have happened based on a group, and that happened. But when it comes to the international human rights laws, as I mentioned, the protections of the rights of the public is the sole responsibility of the state agencies. And if the state agencies fail to protect, but worsely, if they commit a crime against its own people, then the international law and international mechanisms needs to be utilized in order to address that kind of situation. Mat Luipunge already mentioned that Burma military enjoy the impunity for years. We have over decades of strong evidence that they committed such violences across the country. And I personally know that whenever the military operated its action across the country, particularly in the ethnic area, in the rural area, the military committed such kind of sexual violence. I happen to came across this kind of incident back in 1996. I involved in documenting such kind of cases in 1999. And back in year 2000, I personally involved in documenting the victims of the sexual violence among the Rohingya women. And I also hurt some of the military officials told me that when the men were out in the military operations, they 
were away from their wives. So normally they would understand of having such kind of behavior when they were out in the field. So this is to say that the military officials really understand that kind of incident and they even allow to do so as, as if that they've got a license to rape. As I mentioned that the WLB reported in the UN about this kind of incident properly. And situations in Kachin, situations in Shan, situations in Rohingya community, were documented by the independence facts finding missions of the UN. So basically, the military use this sexual violence as a weapon and as their strategy. We have all sort of documents and strong evidence. And as a result of all this, the military was blacklisted in the list of UN for its behavior. Well, in terms of the future direction, there are evidence and information that are ready for the military to be prosecuted in ICC. And a case was filed in Argentinian court. In the revolution, they still commit this sort of behavior. So basically, all our organizations are required to document and to collect all the evidence in order for the military to be prosecuted for their wrongdoing. So this sexual violence, it's part of the war crime and the crime against humanity. In order for the military to take accountability and responsibility, the leaders of the military are required to be prosecuted. This is the direction that we are walking on. This is something that I just would like to share at this moment. Thank you. You will mention that the role of the state agencies, including the military, is to protect the people, but rather they did all the opposite way, which is to say that they kill the unarmed public and their integrity were not there at all. So due to the solidarity of the people with the support of the ethnic revolution organizations, I could see that the revolution it's on its direction of success. Next, I would like to greet CDM Captain Yeminu Minglabatu. I have a question for you. Have you ever heard about today? And what is your feeling and opinions towards the points that has been discussed by the previous speaker. And what is your opinion regarding this issue? Siama Luipunge and Dokinoma mentioned about 
the sexual violence committed by the military during their military operation all across the country. I also aware of the allegation that the soldiers rape the underage girl, woman, etc., etc. Well, farther than all these allegations, they mention about the strong evidence of such crime. And they also talked about that all this evidence will be used to bring justice and to prosecute the perpetrators, including soldiers, the leaders, the chief of army, and the whole institution are to be respond are to be are to take responsibility and accountability. I strongly agree this these points. When the military operation were conducted in the rural area, in the ethnic area, they would normally encounter women and girls in general, not necessarily the male adult. So the soldier would arrest the women and girls that they encounter as the first group of people in each areas and starting committing this kind of behavior. This is something that I could say. And there was incident that two kitchen teachers were raped by a group of soldiers. And I also heard that an old kitchen woman were raped, but no action was taken. I heard all of this, but what I can say is that these kind of action must be stopped and accountability and responsibility through the change of command needs to be there. Protection of the sexual violence has to be there in the army. I would also like to talk about the role of the people in the protection of that kind of sexual violence. I also would like to point the role of the women in general in protection of the sexual violence. The stigma that the victim faced was triggered in general by the women community. That is what I observed and understand. So my point is that the women community needs to protect their own peer women. This is all the points that I would like to make at this moment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Captain. I also would like to invite participants to raise any question or points throughout the Q&A box. Next, what we need to be done is something I just would like to discuss as the second round of discussion. I serve, I served in the military in the past and the experience that I had, my personal encounter that I had was rather ugly. I still remember that at some point I was on security duty at night. All my male colleagues 
we're all drunk. So I did not feel safe at all from my own colleagues. Back in the time in Sitwe, there was no electricity at night. My superior commanded me to come to his office. He was so drunk, I dared not to go to his office. I had no other choice, but I tried to find another female friend to go to his office. When I reached to his office with my female friend, he yelled at me for the fact that I did not come alone to his office. I was so humiliated by his swell words. Right at that night, I wrote a resignation letter and I sent it to the headquarter. I encountered that sort of situation in the past when I was in the military. Again, the woman family member who were left in the military living quarter. Experienced quite a lot of sexual harassment, sexual violence when their male family member were out in the military operation in the field. And the daughters of the soldiers who were left in the military living quarter were raped by the other colleagues. So these kind of situation were not uncommon. And the inappropriate words, inappropriate behavior were committed by the military men. that they committed this kind of behavior to the woman who lived in this military living quarters. The families of the military personnel who lived in the military living quarters were to be protected by the own military people, but they were the one who committed such sort of sexual violence. And it is not uncommon that they send the illicit pictures of mill to the female colleagues in the military which is also the form of the sexual violence. And when the woman who received that kind of picture reported, then the perpetrator said that it was sent wrongly to this lady who he meant to send to his wife. So basically, if we looked at the social context, due to the poverty, due to the unemployment, the
some of the community believe that it would be much more secure to send their daughters in the military, but the reality is not the case. Knowing about the reality, knowing about what happened in the military, how to protect it and how to address it is something that we need to talk about. In my opinion, there is no proper military discipline. There is no proper utilizations of the military law. The martial law is quite weak as well within the military. So basically that kind of sexual violence in this incidence has increased under the military council in order to uproot this sort of vicious cycle of the sexual violence, removing the security council and having a new military would be the way talking about that the way for the future, what needs to be done in order to uproot the vicious cycle of the sexual violence in the military, the future direction of the revolution is something that I would like to invite Siamal Luipunge to discuss around this. Thank you. First of all, what I would like to discuss is the impunity. The impunity must be stopped as soon as possible in order to eliminate the sexual violence. As I mentioned in the first round of discussion, regardless of the quantity of the sexual violence, regardless of who the perpetrators are, the impunity must be stopped. If the impunity happened, the perpetrators automatically get the license to rape. Having this kind of culture, having this kind of practice in Myanmar, the sexual violence on the physical and mental state of women are still there. As I mentioned, the logic is very simple. If someone must not stop to when someone commit the sexual violence, then the perpetrator would believe that it is okay to commit such kind of behavior. And the public would believe that this is just the way of life. Now we are in this revolution, but it is not an excuse that we are in the revolution and it is not the excuse that we are still building the federal democratic country. We are not to fail in taking action against the sexual violence. Whoever committed the sexual violence, be it the military man, be it the member of the public, be it the member of the ethnic armed organization, these perpetrators are to be penalized. Otherwise, men will hold the license to rape.
this is a situation no one wants. Therefore, in order to eliminate, in order to reduce the sexual violence, the impunity must be stopped. Another thing that I just would like to talk about is the various forms of discriminating against women. Human trafficking is a form of discrimination against women and violence against women. I am a Ta'ang woman. I lived in the northern part of Shan State, which is the border area of China. I personally interview the victim of a human trafficking, a woman victim. Some of the women were trafficked in China as a live food of uh, livestock. So basically, women were trafficked into China as a food of animal farm. This kind of situation needs to be stopped. Action needs to be conducted. Public needs to be mobilized in order to stop this kind of violence. Another thing I just would like to talk about is the norm of Myanmar people. Whenever there was a rape case, the Myanmar society would blame the victim. Well, due to due to the way that the woman dressed, due to the way that the woman acted, due to the way that the woman behaved, women invited to get raped. So this is the stereotype attitude of our people. So basically, these are all wrong. As one of the panelists mentioned that a kitchen old woman who was over 60 years old got raped. And a girl who was not even eight years old of age got raped. Why? Because of their fleshy dress or because of their inviting behavior? No. That's why I condemned victim blaming perpetrators are the criminals. The criminals must be penalized. Justice needs to be brought and restored. This is the responsibility of everyone. It is the responsibility of each and every one of us, and it is the responsibility of the international community to have it stopped, to have it pushed into the right direction. I also would like to give you some example. The military operation was conducted very recently in a village. The soldier stayed overnight in the monastery overnight. 
there were nuns. Nuns were raped by the soldiers who stayed overnight at their place. But the soldiers pay some amount of money not to have these incidents reported. And the community were silent about that. If the community were silent about that incident, then the military, sorry, the community in that sense would also part of this crime. If you see this wrong situation, we would like to ask everyone to help the victim and to participate in restorations of justice. Even if no practical action can be done right at this moment, we have the responsibility to document that incident involved in the reporting for the future. And in the ethnic area, the public let judiciary processes happened as well, but this was not just enough. The Myanmar women were very much framed with all sort of traditional values such as integrity, disciplinary, etc., etc. As a result of all this, customary rule, traditional practice, and cultural values, it is very difficult for women to tell to the community that I got raped. This is something we really need to understand in the shoes of the women themselves. The leaders, the decision makers are to be sensitive about it. The women peace national plan is something this country lacks. The WLB pushed for it for a long time, but it did not happen. The women security and peace national plan, it's very critical to be there. This is very important to consider for the national reconciliation. The gender mainstreaming, it's very critical. So all the stakeholders, including NUG, must consider right at this moment to have and implement the Women Peace and Security National Plan. This is something that I urge and request for. Thank you very much. The protection for the women in this country is very loose. The penalty for rape cases was very light and some of the rapists serve only a very minimal imprisonment terms and got released due to all sort of amnesty. So in my opinion, protection of women in this country is not affected and efficient at all. Sema Kiyoma, now the floor is yours for sharing your points. I thank you, Captain Kimpa Baton, the moderator. Basically, you share all the insight situation and dynamic of what's going on within the military. 
we heard a bit about that sort of ugly situation in the military, but the public disclosure of such incident by the military women themselves were very rare in the past. So, the superior military men committed that such kind of sexual violence against their subordinate wives, their subordinate daughters. We heard about it. And but that kind of situation were never publicly exposed. Continue in continuation about the stoppage of the impurity, the accountability and responsibility it's to be there. But when it comes to the accountability and responsibility, the agency's accountability and responsibility is not just enough. The accountability and responsibility of a public, it's also equally important. And the one of the panelists, Captain, mentioned one point which make me smile myself. Well, please don't get me wrong. If I understand you correctly, you mentioned about that the women society needs to be changed and needs to take a role in protecting their own peer women. Well, I agree to part of it and I disagree to part of it. What do I mean by that is that it is the role of the community, regardless of men or women, to help and to get engaged in mitigating and eliminating the sexual violence. In general, the perpetrators are male, well, at least the majority of the perpetrators are male. So that's why the involvement of a male community in cutting off the vicious cycle of the social violence is to be there. Otherwise, it will not be a success. Accountability and responsibility is to be there in the state agencies, army, and in the community as well. We all talked about a new military. We all talked about the new country. We all talked about the new community. So basically, every direction of this country is in the spirit of revolution. So in this, revolutionary phases, the armed organizations are to be very sensitive about this issue. And the ethnic armed organizations are to be very sensitive about this situations by ensuring and enforcing and enhancing their ethics. If the men in the revolution commit this kind of sexual violence, then this revolution will not bring any good to this country, which I can say it very bluntly. We all know that sexual violence happened and is happening. So basically, all the ethnic armed organizations 
including KNU, etc., etc., require to have accountability and responsibility if this incident happened as well. The women organizations tried to have women protection legal framework in the previous government time, but it was not the priority of the government then. The military that the people want is the military of a very high standards in terms of their behavior, ethics, accountability and responsibility. So this is what we want as a future. We urge to implement this direction. We ask justice to be brought towards the victims. When it comes to the victims, we have women and we have LGBT. We have lesbian, we have gays, whatever you name it. The sexual harassment must be stopped for every individual. And we were reported that there are all sort of sexual harassment and sexual violence, even in the prison. Now, let me emphasize for the future, new country uproot the fascist army. It's what everyone talks about. We want a peaceful country. We want a developed country and we want everyone to be equal, then we need to open up the role of a woman. If there is no equal protection and if there is no equal voices for the woman, then how this revolution would be a success? One could question that. The spirit of brotherhood, the spirit of sisterhood are to be there. What happened is that there were all sort of jokes from the male colleagues saying that, well, we were out in the jungle for the revolution, uh, but the number of female revolutionists in the jungle were outnumbered than that of a male revolutionist. So we did not have enough number of girlfriends. Well, there are female revolutionists in the jungle. There are extra care that we as a male revolutionist has to provide it for them. Well, this kind of comment were very disturbing. This kind of words, this kind of inappropriate behaviors are something one must not keep and one must not tolerate. This is the situation, not just unjust situation needs to be addressed. So we want to have a revolution that protect women, that stop the sexual violence, that promote responsibility and accountability of the unjust situation. So basically, back in 2018, in the list of the UN General Secretary Blacklist, the army, Myanmar army was there. We do not 
once our revolutionary force followed that footstep. So all the armed organizations and revolutionary forces, I hope will take very much seriously about it and take action against it. Now, thank you very much. And I just would like to invite um, Captain Yeminu for your contribution. What needs to be done is something that I would just would like to say. In the Southeast Asian community, women were seen as a lower sex than that of a man. Equality is an attitude that everyone needs to have between men and women. I may say something not what I meant in the first round of discussion. Rokin Omar pointed it out. I just would like to clarify a few things. What happened is that, or at least what I experienced is that rape cases were not told, were not reported. Women were not in a position to point out the perpetrator. Women were so afraid of telling what had happened to her. If the victim herself would not talk about it, that incident will never be known. So my message is that, women, please tell what happened to them. Again, there were all sort of nuance between or among rapes and other form of sexual assault. It is a job of a court to identify what had happened in order for the court to judge what had happened. Women must speak out. The individual women must speak out. If in the worst situation, if a woman, if the victim woman would not speak out, then that woman might have a very high risk of being killed. So my point is that if a woman had all sort of sexual violence experience, physically, verbally, or in any forms, then I encourage the woman to speak out. For example, in a very crowded public transport in Yangon, it is not uncommon that the woman in these bus got sexually harassed by the male passengers in these buses. In that case, I encourage women to address that, to speak out about that. That is what I meant. And another point that I would like to say is that the military law needs to be reformed, changed, and have it much strong. I just would like to say that they did not give green light for sexual violence, that I can say, but 
they utilize their military law very loosely. So they need strong law in the future in order to address this kind of situation. The protection of the female military personnel, the female members, uh, the female family members of the military personnel in the military living areas are the area that the military management and military law needs to be enhanced. And whenever there is this military operation in the rural area, there were incidents of rape, killing, torture. But then again, the leadership would require to take strong and serious actions to penalize the wrongdoer. Now, I am not asking the military council to have strengthened these situation. No, because we are getting rid of the military council these days. So for the future military forces, these are to be strongly considered in order to eliminate the sexual violence in crisis. Thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution. Myanmar women in the history were kept within the household. The social structure has evolved. Myanmar women went out of home houses and participated in all sort of work and careers. So it's very important that the Myanmar community, particularly the Myanmar women, needs to have an enable environment for them to live, for them to walk, for them to be protected. And talking about no rule of law situation, it is the systematic distortion of the military regime to have weak judiciary sector, monopolizing it so that they have control over the country. As a result of all these, the negative impact were more severe for the women community. Since no rule of law, the complaint report for a woman by the woman through the state mechanisms was very difficult or sometimes not accessible at all. Women were not protected enough. And we have this coup situation got worse. And at the very beginning of the coup, the amnesty were announced as a result of it, or the criminals were out in the community. So the military council announced this amnesty in order to free much more rooms in prison for the political prisoners. And this situation make the women community father was. So it is very important to have this revolution 
a success one very soon in order to enjoy the women community to feel much safer in this country. With the success of the revolution, we will have a new government, we will have a new system, and as a result of it, we will have a much safer, much peaceful country for that. The rule of the strong judiciary and strong rules of law are required to have this kind of result. Thank you. Now, I just would like to invite if anyone would like to contribute from sisters to sisters. Well, the panelists from sisters to sisters will contribute our points towards the very end of this conversation. Now, I just would like to give the floor for our participants if they raise any question. I have one hand raised. Please go ahead. I hope that you can hear my voice. Yes, please go ahead. Now we talked about this sexual violence. How I see it as a Burmese, probably it has to do with the Burmese culture. Women were treated as the lower sex. In order to elaborate that perspective, we also looked at um, young people, we also looked at children, we also look at women, all lower than that of a man. We looked at the children as, as if that they know nothing and they have no right whatsoever to speak with an adult. Well, as you all know that uh, not all male adults knows everything. Sometimes the children might know more things than that of the male adult. So basically I'm talking about that kind of discrimination. Discrimination can be seen as the culture norm of us. But how are we going to get rid of that kind of attitude? So basically reform, a national reform, if I may use this high flown words might be required. Education sector might need to be reformed in order to address this kind of situation. Herod learning is what we were trained with. Critical thinking, conversation is something needs to be part of our education. So right to education, critical thinking and conversation rather than parrot learning is what needs to be there. And now I just would like to talk about the Burmese prediction and culture. Whenever we talked about the Burmese traditions and culture, we often refer to this Gombaun dynasty or Bagan dynasty. But when it comes to the Burmese traditions and culture, that traditions and culture needs to be progressive and needs to be evolved rather than static. But whenever we talked about the Burmese tradition, the Burmese tradition we talked about its traditions of this Gombaun dynasty tradition. In my opinion, 
the prediction needs to be evolved. So basically, in my opinion, the male dominance community might use this predictions in order for them to discriminate and to control the others. And another thing I just would like to talk about is that the sense of inferior. If one feel not confident enough, then they might want to suppress the others as well. Our forms of arts, our sense of humor, our ways of drama, our ways of entertainment are something that I even cannot tolerate as they were so discriminatory. In the state TV, in the Myanmar literature, there were all sort of jokes, comedy, drama against women, disabled community as a subject for laughing. So the one who play in that direction, the one who participate in this direction are very much damaging their own reputation. So this needs to be fixed. This needs to be addressed for much developed version of Myanmar. And I just would like to know, and I just would like us to discuss how we will address this situation. Thank you very much. I kind of wonder if there are any one who just would like to further contribute for what we are discussing. I saw another hand raised. Please go ahead. Well, we have another person with the name Kanzo. Kanko, please go ahead. Thank you very much for having this webinar. I have a question to CDM Captain. You mentioned about that the women community also needs to play a role to protect their own women. I would like to have what you said clarified. A woman might be a victim, a children might be a victim, an LGBT might be a victim. And if the victim would not speak about what they talked about, then the justice would not be brought. That is what it seems that you mean. If it is the case, wouldn't it be the double damage that this victim suffered from? If you put yourself in their shoes, if they speak out, they may have the risk of being retaliated. And you also gave a particular example that uh, if a woman got sexually harassed in a public transport, in a bus, 
you encourage all of them to speak out that experience, but that situation would not favor the victim to speak out. Then the victim would keep herself silent. The thing is that um, whenever a woman would speak out, then the people nearby would say, would ask all the details. It would be very humiliating. So basically, the victim blaming is something might be happened. So in my opinion, the external support and external intervention, it's very much needs to be active. But rather than having active or expecting the active role of speaking out by the victim itself might trigger the victim blaming. So this is something that I just would like to say. Thank you. I also mentioned one thing. I mentioned about the role of the judiciary in the court. The external opinions or hearsay information will not have any legal weight in the judgment of the court. So when I say the victim women required to speak out, this is to mean that it is required that the woman herself would needs to tell to the court what happened to her. Only then the judge would be able to make the just judgment. And again, another example that I encounter is that there were arranged marriage. That arranged marriage happened in order to cover up the rape case. In that situation, I encourage the woman victim to speak out in order to address that situation rather than accepting the arranged marriage. In the future, we need to have free from corrupted judiciary. It's what we need to have in order not to have the sexual violence, in order not to have the sexual harassment. Women needs to have courage to express what had happened. So that, in my opinion, it's a way to be encouraged and to speak out what had happened in order to mitigate and in order to protect the future potential case as well. I just would like to, thank you. Well, I just would like to have a follow-up conversation about that. Speaking out is not just the courage enough, but having courage to survive of the experience is the real courage, in my opinion. You mentioned about that the own family member rape their own female family member. Yes, there were cases like this, but 
When it comes to the managing this kind of situation, the judicial process, it's not just only the solution. The whole community has a responsibility to protect and to prevent this kind of situation happening as well. You are correct. I just would like to say something. We have this infamous Victoria case that infamous Victoria case was the national interest. The whole population support the victim, but the actual perpetrator could not still at this moment being penalized. My point is that, yes, role of a community is very important to support and to protect. And on top of that, the strong rule of law and the strong judiciary system, it's a must for everything as well. Thank you. I am Lui Bonge. I just would like to contribute one thing in this conversation. Following the conversation that we have now, first of all, I just would like to mention about the victim blaming. Victim blaming, it's a very common culture in Burma area, sorry, in Burma community and in ethnic community, the victim blaming is quite common. As I mentioned already, rather than victim blaming, why this happened and what prevention could be there are something that we have to pay much more attention. For Captain, Captain, you mentioned your point based on the experience that you had probably, but the experience that I had tell us something different. In the Tan community, the Tan community lives on the tea leaves. There is this Bama saying, if you want to have a good tea leaves, go to the Tan hills. Well, it's very true, the Ang climb hills to pick the tree lee at the tea trees. And in this tea plantation hills, the tea leaves because the women were pointed with gun by soldier and got raped. We filed this, these cases in various courts, but no one or no courts take any actions. The military court would take some or let's say very few action against this sort of cases, but they were not enough. Min Online and Uau Min mentioned these words that if there were rape bring to the court martial. Well, if we go to the court martial, 
the military judge would ask the victim tell the private number of the soldier who got who raped you of course how the victim would know about that again now the burden of proof the burden of proof it's not on the victim the burden of proof it's on the perpetrators but in myanmar the burden of proof it's on the victim how would these team leave because women would prove that the soldier rape her so we need to have a much broader picture we need to have a policy we need to have a system that would prevent the sexual violence and we need to have a systems and policy that prevent that protect individuals from the sex crime so the burden of proof must not only be on the victims themselves here i am not saying who is right or who is wrong i am just saying the system that we have the customary practice that we have the protection that we have is not effective and efficient enough for the victims and for the women of this of 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 such sex crime this country needs massive reform in terms of penal code in terms of customary law all the materials all the tools all the mechanisms all the practice we have in terms of the burden of proof it's completely on the woman victim this is not fair so when it comes to the sexual violence sexual violence issue it's to be addressed not necessarily only in the conflicting situation but as a whole country even in the democratic government period this sexual violence number were not dropped were not decreased one need to be critically analyzed what did not work policy law practice or any other thing nevertheless victim blaming would make us far away from the justice but for the woman it has huge burden or it has enormous difficulty to tell to the world that i got rape due to the humiliation due to stigma due to family concern due to whatever we read such kind of cases almost on a daily basis and we have no more hearts to listen to or to experience or to witness this kind of situations anymore thank you I just would like to add a few things. We need to find a solution to address this. There are practical solutions that we need to talk. If we fail to have the perpetrator accountable and responsible, this issue will never be addressed if justice would not be brought for the victims then this issue will never be addressed 
In a country, the government, the military are the duty bearers in terms of the protections of its own people and in terms of protecting the human rights of its own people. If these responsibilities are not bad and if that responsibility is not implemented, then the action that we need to address that situation is to bring the field actors take responsibility and accountability. I just want to give you an example. Seven soldiers, Tamador personnel, rape a girl walking in a petty field in the evening. Sorry, it is a woman. In, in fact, that woman has a husband with four children. She reported about that to the village hat. The village had replied to her that you pack everything and ran away from this village because the seven soldiers who rape you will follow you and burn our village. And that raped woman packed everything, brought four children and passed Myanmar Thai border and end up being in Thailand. I interviewed that woman. What is the role of the village leaders then? What is the role of everyone to address that? So this kind of situations happened not just yesterday. This kind of situation happened even before we were born in Myanmar. The proper judiciary system, the rule of law, the accountability and responsibility are all to be there, of course. But when it comes to the social justice, when it comes to the cultural justice, the victim blaming, the stigmatization are all to be there through public awareness and public education. At the same time, wrong law or unfair law or not proper law needs to be changed. So all of these require time to do so. But in the revolution period, what is very important is to have the attitudinal shift. We call this SAC, the Burmese military. Enjoy the license to rape. When we say this statement, people may not like it. People feel bad about it. People feel offended about it, particularly the military community might be offended. Why we have this kind of statement? The superior, the leaders knew what's happened on the ground. There are solid evidence. There are enough proof that all are in possessions of the United Nations. The UN communicated about that to the military from time to time in the past with all these strong evidence. But the military 
from throughout the time, continuously deny it, ignore it. This implies that that the military gave its personal license to rape. If you looked at Zagain, if you looked at Magui at this revolution time, this sexual violence happened. Why? They want to commit that. They know that they can do it. So as Siama Lui Bunge mentioned, they use this sexual violence to suppress the proud and pride mentality of a public. They have political agenda to suppress the public. They use this strategy systematically and intensively with the intensified action. Zagain, Magui, Moon, Yin, Kachin, everywhere. Well, of course, when it comes to the terminology, when we use the systematic action, of course, the leader would not tell to their soldier, go and rape 10 women today. No, they would not say it, but they knew it. Their soldier committed that kind of sexual violence, but they close their eyes not to take any action against the perpetrator. So they let the soldier enjoy it impunity. They knew it, they, but they ignore it. They behave as if that their soldier did not commit that kind of sexual violence. So they use this sexual violence in order to gain the political agenda. They strategically use this sexual violence and they use this tactic widespreadly in the country in order to contain and control the public. So this is my message that I just would like to give to everyone. And I thank you. I saw another hand raised by Kong Mozi. Please go ahead. Our question and Sarimara, Migo Kuyang, you know, Mataka. And there is also a question in the QA. Um, okay, well, my baton, question and Sally to tell Papiala. A moderator, my baton, there is a question in the QA box if you would like to address that or if you like would like to read this out. Well, it is a question from Koso Mojo. What you mentioned is that in order to eliminate the sexual violence, the only way is to promote the rule of law. In order to promote the rule of law, we need to have a strong civilian government. The illegal military council is the only institution to be blamed of all this problem. We need to have the civilian government back. Only the civilian government would promote the rule of law and will be able to prevent the sexual violence. Thank you. Once the military council is uprooted and once we have the civilian government, this country, I believe, will be on the right direction and will be a developed one. Indeed, I develop in this way. So basically, now I just would like to give the floor to our colleagues from Sisters to Sisters in order to wrap up this conversation. 
Thank you very much. All the panelists, the CDM Captain Yemenu, CDM Captain Kimpapaton, you also, you all contribute all the situations of sexual violence in the crisis situation within the community, within the militaries. This is something that we observed very clearly. This kind of conversation regarding the sexual violence, it's the first of its kind by participating the military women and the military men themselves. So basically, this is the first of its kind conversation ever, but must not be the last conversation. This kind of conversation needs to be continued. CDM Captain Yemenu is the member of the People's Goal. He shared his opinions and experience. He has a very progressive opinions. Of course, we need to learn a lot from everyone. I also learn a lot from the women leaders participating in the panelists. Again, this is the conversation that we need. We need to continue. We also talked about the ways to move forward. So, so much or mentioned about the rule of law, the importance of the rule of law. But what kind of rules of law, rules of law is something that we need to further discuss. When it comes to the rule of law, I just would like to say that rule of just law, it's what we need. It could be the situation that rule of unfair laws might be equally damaging than that of no law at all. Talking about that unfair laws, the questions of impunity needs to be addressed. We need to have a fair law in order not to have the impunity. That might be a way to mitigate, eliminate the sexual violence for sisters to sisters, we are very thankful to have this program together with the people's goal. I just would like to contribute one brief thing, if I may allow. If I may be allowed. Thank you. Yes, please go ahead. The society mobilization in this perspective, it's rather critical. We have that sort of inhumane situation in this country, but why? We have this situation. Well, it is as simple as such to say that the law does not protect its own people. Secondly, I just want to talk about the protection by the religious institution is something that require. And another point is that the member of the religious institution enjoys the impunity. This is something that we need to know it and try to transform the unjust situation. 
gradually. So say, for example, if the religious leader committed that kind of sexual violence, how the victim would report about it or speak about it. The power, the abuse of power at the leaders are the area that we need to address in order to get rid of the impunity in the future as well. I just want to say one thing. Rule of law is not all about it in the new country of us. In the old democratic country, the developed democratic country, rape cases happened, many as well. This is another word, the correct case. Rape will be there. Whenever we have men and women in this world, rape will be there. The laws, the rules, the policies, the practice are what required to be there. Zero rape is something we cannot expect act the high moral standards at the individual levels are to be obtained through education systems currently we have this lgbt individual in the detention they got sexually harassed so when it comes to the sexual violence, sexual violence is not only about the women victims. They are also men victims as well. Johnny Depp, who is the victim, who was alleged as the puppet, perpetrator, but ten, but turn out to be the victim in the end. So basically, when it comes to the sexual violence, sexual violence, it's a situation that happened to all genders. So basically, rather than addressing this sexual violence with the gender perspective, would not be enough, but rather as the type of violence for all the genders, it's what required to be happening in the future. Thank you. I also would like to mention one thing due to our culture, due to our tradition. The topic about sex is not comfortably talked about. So even in the middle education, in, in, in the middle school education system, the sex education is something to be there for our future generations. Thank you. Thank you very much for all the panelists for your contribution in this session. I just would like to ask everyone to like and share this live session in the Facebook. I also would like to encourage you to participate and tune in for next Sunday's talk. As you all know that it is the 77th birthday of the mother of Myanmar, Do Aung San Suu Kyi. She sacrificed all her life for the improvement of Myanmar. We feel very sad that they that um, that she is not free on her birthday. I just would like to wish for her to be free from very soon. I also would like to wish all the detainees.
to be free soon. With this, I close today's conversation. Thank you very much. Yeah.